Yeah, that event set to get started here at Cal Anderson Park in just a few minutes. But as you mentioned, the Office of Police Accountability did find that that officer who made the comments about Candola's death did violate SPD policies on professionalism as well as bias-based policing. But it could be weeks before we learn what discipline that officer will face. There's no job on earth where that would be acceptable. And a cop is not an exception. Being, being a police officer is not an exception. It's been a year since Seattle police officer Kevin Dave hit and killed Janavi Kandula in South Lake Union while responding to a call. And since Detective Daniel Otter was caught on body camera video appearing to mock Kandula's death, saying her life had limited value. Both incidents launched two separate investigations into possible criminal charges for Dave and an Office of Police Accountability investigation into Otter's comments. I hear a lot of discussions around the police building community trust. I think that it's impossible when police kill with impunity and Kevin Dave is no exception. It's unacceptable for a year to pass with no action taken. In the months since, local activists have held several protests demanding action and answers. There is a completely different justice system at play here when it comes to the harms that police officers perpetuate against community members. And it also makes us feel as if our life is devalued, that our life has no value. The King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office has hired a collision reconstruction firm to review the case. And the office will meet later this month to discuss the firm's findings and any possible criminal charges for Officer Dave. Meanwhile, OPA says Otter did violate SPD policy, calling his words derogatory, disturbing and inhumane. The OPA director saying in a statement, the officer's comments undermined public trust in the department, himself, and his colleagues. For many, it confirmed, fairly or not, beliefs that some officers devalue and conceal disparaging views about community members. And OPA has not yet announced what disciplinary action Otter could face. Uh, I'm told that that information will be released once the disciplinary process is complete. And in that process, the officer also has the opportunity to file a grievance or an appeal as well. Reporting live in Capitol Hill, and Ann Wynn, Como News. It began with this ask from Tacoma Police, but newly elected Tacoma Council Member Jamika Scott insists it began with her when she started videotaping officers, her attorney Beverly Allen. She was there outside the police line, again, quietly filming the police doing their jobs as she had every right to do. It was her way to provide citizen oversight and voice opposition to what happened here just hours prior. An illegal street takeover at Pacific and 9th in Tacoma. A police cruiser arrives on scene, and as the crowd surrounds the cop car, the officer takes off through the crowd. She came to watch as the investigation unfolded and alleges the only reason she got arrested is because of that. She was filming the officers. She had announced that they were there to provide citizen oversight. And that is when, several hours after the officer had run over the, the crowd to begin with, that is when they decided arbitrarily that they were going to push the citizens away. In police body cam video, officers repeatedly asked the crowd to move back. 30 seconds later... Move. Move. Let's go. Time to keep going. Time to keep going. Officers repeat the order to disperse. Move back. You need to disperse. No. if you do not disperse. That's when Scott says she was thrown to the ground and arrested, handcuffed and fingerprinted, but never charged. Hours later, she was released. There was no lawful basis to move the police tape any further. In a statement, the council member said the legal system can be used to hold police accountable and ensure meaningful change. Michelle Esteban, Como News.